Hi, we're going to talk about constructors. Um, so a constructor, as we hopefully know, is there to initialize the class. Uh, it does a lot more than that. Um, and uh, stuff around constructors is actually quite complex. Um, I will make a, another video to deal with code on all the initialization stuff. But I'll give you uh, uh, just a, a brief overview here. Right, so it's a common looking constructor, right? We have a, an instance variable x, we pass in a value val, and we set x to be val. Um, a few things going on here. Um, the first purpose of a constructor is to initialize the object. So that's what this line does, it initializes the object. If I screw up, and this happens periodically from time to time with various people, myself included, if I screw up and say val is assigned x, that's why I put final here. Um, X is by default in uh, zero. It'll be the zero, null, or false because it's a variable outside of the, all the methods. It's an instance variable. Um, if I say val is assigned X and I didn't have final here, I'd be altering the parameter to set it to zero. When what I actually want to do is set the, the value here to be whatever I passed in here. Marking this as final stops this mistake from happening. Okay, So that's one reason why I use final on all my parameters. Another thing we get the chance to do, and we're going to talk more about this later Later on. Again, this is just a brief intro of things. Um, we get to make sure that things are valid. So we'll talk about throws later on. Um, you should all be familiar with exception handling, but uh, we'll, we'll get to it. So if the value is less than zero, we're going to throw some sort of exception. Otherwise, we'll we'll uh, set the value. So this guarantees that the value for x is zero or greater. So that could be a constraint that we have. Uh, how many years old is a person? Well, they're zero through whatever. They're not negative one. Right. So um, how much how much uh, weight can that scale hold? It can't hold negative weight. Right, so there's all sorts of things you could actually do to, to do validation. Um, so it lets us create, so new creates the object, the constructor lets us initialize the object, and it gives us a chance to va validate that all the, uh, the object is correct by the time it's finished the constructor. So that is the real purpose of a constructor, to properly initialize an object. Um, similarly, if B extends A, um, and if this is all we provided, nothing else, we have a problem because the compiler is going to be nice and give us a constructor. Every class must have a constructor. I'm running out of room, so I'll just do it like this. And that is what the constructor is going to look like. It's going to take no parameters. It's going to have the same access modifier as the class. So pub, if it's public here, it'll be public here. Um, and it's simply going to call super. We've already seen super in polymorphism. Super means call the thing in the parent. In this case, it means call the constructor in the parent class. Remember, every class has to have a constructor. So this one means call the one in A that takes no arguments. Problem is, we don't have a constructor here that takes no arguments. Now this one, we call it the default constructor. It takes no arguments and all it does is call the parent. You can type that in if you want. There's no need to if that's gonna be your only class, only constructor. However, as you see here, we created our own constructor. Therefore, the compiler doesn't help us out. It doesn't give us that. It does do one thing. It calls super as the very first thing in the constructor. Right? So the very first line of every constructor must be a call to super. 
if you don't put that in explicitly, the compiler is going to put it in for you by uh, you know, just like that with no arguments. So it calls the no arg constructor. So the no arg constructor is a constructor that takes no arguments. The default constructor happens to be a no argument constructor. Okay? Um, you should not get in the habit of always creating a no argument constructor. Um, I will I will generally um, create one constructor, sometimes more than one, but often just one constructor, um, and it'll have all the parameters I need to pass in. That'll be the only constructor I pass in because I generally speaking don't want to create an object that has an undefined state to begin with. Um, there are some cases where I do, but not always. So I don't, as a matter of course, provide a constructor that takes no arguments. So in this case, I have no need for A to take no arguments. So I'm not going to provide a constructor that takes no arguments. Uh, that means here, when we call super passing no arguments, it doesn't work because the only constructor here takes an int. So we actually have to now go out of our way and write our own constructor that calls it with super and a value. An alternative would be to have this one take an int and pass that int in here. Uh, but at no point in time will the, cons will the compiler magically call super passing in a value. It'll always call super with no, no uh, parameters. So if you're letting the constructor do the work for you, or the compiler do the work for you and create your constructors, keep in mind, it's only gonna create one that takes no parameters. If you wanna call one that takes parameters, you have to explicitly write that yourself. So that's having a, parent, a child call a parent constructor. There's another thing you can do which is, and I, I sometimes will do this. I will give it a, a no argument constructor. And I might do something like this. I won't, but it could. So I can say X has got a value of 10. That's the default value. However, um, I don't like having the same bit of code in two places. So what I'm gonna do is do what's called constructor chaining. So now when you call new A with no parameters, it's going to call this constructor. It's going to call this, which is different than polymorphism in this case. It's not this dot, it's just this, which means call the constructor here, passing in the value 10. So by default, we're going to give X a value of 10, but if you want to give it a value like 11, go for it, right? So it could be that most, like 99% of the time, I want the value to be 10. So as a convenience, I made this constructor. Doesn't mean it'll always be the case. So I give them the ability to set their own value if they want a different value. So it'll come to this constructor and then go to this constructor, which the first thing it'll do is go to the parent constructor. And then the parent constructor will do its work. It'll come back and do this assignment. This will come back here, and it would do anything else we had after this. So that's the beginning of the uh, um, order of it, uh, the initialization order stuff. There's a couple other things, um, but I'm going to show that to you in a video with code instead of doing it on the whiteboard.